Modern aircraft allows us to realize our dream to fly. We can soar the highest peaks, circle beautiful lakes, plus cruise the huge deserts and green valleys. The most important concept for ultralights and light sport aircraft is learning how to fly safely. Hi, my name is Paul Hamilton. I'm going to take you through my experience of learning to fly a fixed wing. This will help you understand the flight concepts necessary to be a pilot. In this video, we will learn to fly. We will start out with the basics by flying practical maneuvers necessary to solo, and then we'll cover important areas for you to learn to fly. We will also highlight areas needing further study, all for you to become a safe and competent pilot. All fixed wing aircraft are different. They all have your basic three axis controls, but each have unique characteristics and handle different in the air and on the ground. It's similar to driving around on the road. There are motorcycles, cars, vans, motorhomes, and large trucks, each with a throttle, a brake, and steering, but each require different techniques to master and become proficient. Fixed wing aircraft is similar. Some have nose steering, others have tailwheel steering or differential braking. Some have extremely sensitive controls, others have less sensitive controls. There are stick controls and wheel controls. Faster aircraft are more challenging to learn, but offer greater range with the same flight. Uh, seven uniforms rolling, thank you. Feel the throttle lifted the elevator for us. Bringing the power on, keeping it pointed with our feet down the runway. Moving the stick or wheel side to side moves the ailerons, rolls the wings, and moves the nose in the wrong direction known as adverse yaw. Using your ailerons to use your rudder at the same time to push on the right rudder. Right stick, right rudder, exactly. Right stick. So I'm going to go right here and I push on the right rudder a little bit to coordinate. There you go. And then back. Then you use opposite rudder. Opposite rudder to bring so it back. The idea is whenever you're using the left aileron, use your left rudder. Whenever you're using your right aileron, use your right rudder. Rolling in and out of turns. Would you like me to demonstrate? Sure. We radioed the tower and told them we were eight miles out. The tower told us to enter the pattern, midfield, downwind. Standard procedure is to enter the pattern at a 45 degree angle, so you can be observed best by others. I'm with you. Okay. Okay, a little to your left. Oops. Now see, it's not a pullback, it's an ease back. Now that we've had our first flights with an introduction to the basic concepts of flying the fixed wing, it's time to learn the practical maneuvers necessary to solo. As we learn in the first section, you always pre-flight and start up per pilot's operating handbook specific to the aircraft. Now it's time to get the feel of the pilot's seat, where you will spend most of your time getting ready to solo. During your first flights, we worked on straight and level flight by trimming the airplane to different air speeds and adjusting the throttle to maintain cruise or level flight. Controlled stalls are practiced to master the recovery with hard rudder and nose down elevator. Understanding the unique feel of the stall characteristics and recovery of any aircraft is fundamental. Controlled stalls and recovery with your instructor is valuable understanding. Spins should be approached with caution and a qualified aircraft and a qualified instructor. Depending Ground reference maneuvers is the next step in building on experience gained at controlling the aircraft. Turns about a point, eights on pylons, 
S turns across the road, plus the high speed low pass over the runway are great exercises. Ground reference develops awareness of your interaction to the ground where things move much faster. In crosswinds, you lower your upwind wing, but point your nose with a rudder straight down the runway, maintaining directional control throughout approach and landing to prevent drifting. Building your senses of crosswind flight, especially during takeoffs and landings, is essential to develop proper habits to flying in bumps. A forward slip is used to lose altitude during an approach if you are too high. You lower the wing and adverse yaw the aircraft so the wing is pointed down towards the runway and the wind is hitting the side of the aircraft. A forward slip is also used to get into restricted fields where you must descend at a greater angle. Getting out of the restricted field means utilizing all the runway available and climbing at the maximum angle. Your wing becomes more efficient as the airflow is influenced by the ground.